Hey guys, I'm outside. It's uh, kind of late in the evening again on a Sunday. It's very nice outside. It's not even quite 70 degrees and not very humid at all. And uh, I think it's pretty good temperature and all to do the laminate on the cabinet. So I'm going to try my best to get that done in the next hour or so before it gets too dark. And uh, got me some old sandpaper here that I had left over when I built the house. Got a sanding block here. Got some fine sandpaper, but I need to go with something rougher. And uh, I got several varieties here got some emery cloth industrial grade which would probably be pretty good for this and uh, this is coarse grit we got several grits here there's a medium it says J71 I don't know if 71 is the the uh, grit rating I think it is there's a fine which is 150 so I think either 71 is the, the roughness of it and let's see yeah 50 is this course so that makes sense I think online some people had done what I'm about to do with some 60 grit but what you have to do um, and it's not recommended by a lot of cabinet makers people who install countertops and all is uh, installing laminate over the top of laminate and uh, I'm gonna try to do that um, hopefully I'll have success it's not gonna take as much abuse hopefully in my house as like a countertop would but uh, I've got some other course in here but it's not as high grade it's not industrial grade so I might use the industrial grade just to make sure that it doesn't crack when you fold it sometimes this thinner stuff you know the normal stuff when you fold it around the edges of here and put it in one of these sanding blocks sometimes it'll start cracking and ripping on you if you get too aggressive but uh, maybe I use the industrial grade the, the more like what they call it, emery cloth I might use that and uh, you have to sand the previous uh, covering of laminate and get it kind of rough so it will take the glue if you leave it with that glossy shine on it then uh, there's a chance that glue's not going to adhere very well and the laminate you put over top of it is just going to end up peeling or coming loose so we're going to we're going to rough it up and I'm going to clean it with the air hose and maybe wipe it down a little bit with uh, something to get the dust off and you don't want dust left on there because you know the glue sticking to dust you might as well not even be gluing it you know it'll just come loose so we'll clean it up really good afterwards. I'm going to get started on that right now. We're just going to bring the main cabinet out here on the porch. I'm going to lay it out and get started. And hopefully I can do the laminate here because uh, we are having acorns and stuff falling out of the trees out here. And I don't want stuff falling while I'm waiting for the glue to uh, dry for about 10 or 15 minutes. Because you have to apply it to each side that you're putting together. You have to put it on the cabinet and you have to put it on the laminate. And then after you know it, you know starts activating or doing whatever it does for 10 or 15 minutes, if it's not leaving any residue, like you can check it with a, a little piece of paper or something. If it's just kind of tacky, then usually it's ready to stick together, and it'll make a permanent bond when you put the two halves together. So, we'll get the cabinet out here and start sanding. Okay, guys, I got the main cabinet out here. Set it on an old bed sheet, something that uh, we're not going to use anymore, and. Uh, going to sand down each side. This is the side that had the big gash across the middle anyway so you know even though I cleaned off all the sticky stuff from the artwork I wanted to do that not to make it pretty and smooth but to make sure that it didn't gum up my sandpaper. So the sticky stuff that used to be right up here that had a big bowling sticker on each side you know I've removed that with some goof off and uh, some paper towels and you can see our cat in the background over there. She's about 12 years old believe it or not so we don't know how much longer she's going to be around for, but once I get the power tools out here like the router, she's probably going to take off. But anyway, we're going to sand this side, and I want to clean it off probably with the air hose and maybe a cloth, and I want to do the other side. Now get started. really smells bad too. I don't know if it's just the coating on the laminate or what, but you know it's got kind of a stink to it when you start heating it up and sanding it. But uh, the main thing is to try to get the sheen off of it, the shininess, so that it's a little more 
tacky and rough so that the cement can stick to it and also you want to get it around the edges all around these edges because the glue there really needs to stick best because if it's going to start delaminating it'll probably start at the sides and I might have to take this back off because right now it's in the way of my sanding so I might go in and get a screwdriver and do that but anyway I'll come back in a minute and show you some of the rest of the process Okay guys, I'm finished with the sanding on this one side and it took me probably actually about 30 minutes because I was having to come in and out because uh, I would stop to blow some of the dust off just to, you know, make sure that I was getting all the areas and it would create a pretty big cloud of red dust and I didn't want to be breathing it and I didn't have uh, any type of breathing protection today. So I didn't want to breathe it all in so I kept going in and taking, you know, a three minute break or so in between sanding and I've got it all pretty much roughed up. There's not much of a gloss left on it. You can see it makes a pretty big mess. Got a lot of that coating that's on the laminate all over the place around here, so I'm pretty glad I put this old sheet down. But uh, you can tell some places I got a little happy with the sand and actually went all the way through the red coating, but I believe it was just thinner in those areas, and that was because I was getting a little more aggressive with the edges. I was wanting to make sure that it had a good bond on the edges. But I know it's pretty dark out here, it's about 7 o'clock. But you can see there's not much shininess left. It's it's pretty dull. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to wipe it down with a moist uh, washcloth or something, or an old rag, and get any fine particles of dust off of it so it doesn't you know mess up the adhering of the new laminate. And uh, I'm going to let it dry. Probably wipe it off with a dry cloth. Then I'm going to come back and start putting the glue on and get ready to put down the first coating of laminate on this side. And then. I may not get to the other side tonight, but I want to get at least one side done. Okay guys, this is a roll of new black laminate. This is about a 12 foot by 3 foot roll. Cabinet's a little less than 3 foot wide and a little less than 6 foot tall. So this should do both sides. And I got my new laminate router ready to go. Got the flush trim bit already installed. And I'm about finished sanding outside. Just got to clean up the cabinet a little bit before I start to apply this first side. First thing we'll have to do is put some adhesive on. Okay, that got some of the dry dust off, just wiping it. And I'm going to come back with a wet cloth in a minute, but I'm going to hit it with the air hose one more time. Now I'm going to go inside and dampen my cloth. I'll be right back. Wet cloth or old pair of shorts. They're not underwear, they're just sporty shorts. Now we'll let it dry real good. After it dries real good we should be able to come back and just start the gluing up process. I may have to cut that sheet of laminate in two pieces so you might see a clip from that in a second. Okay guys, got the laminate out of the box and it's held together with this large cardboard band. I'm not about to take that loose inside the house because it'll probably fly out to about 12 foot long and uh, my wife's going to help me get it outside and lay it on the cabinet. 
just going to kind of temporarily position it and use the router as a cutting tool to cut, uh, you know, almost a six foot length off this, a little less. I'm going to try to salvage as much as I can and not have too much overhang, but you probably want to leave a little overhang so you can get a nice tight trim with the router all the way around the cabinet. And uh, once we cut that off and cut the other side, if there's a little strip left, uh, I might decide to do the control panel if I have enough, but I'm not sure that'll happen. Okay guys, right now we're going to do a temporary cut across here just to kind of cut for the length of the cabinet and I'm going to pull it up as high as I can. I'm probably not going to leave a factory edge. I'm going to let it hang a little bit over the bottom and uh, maybe cut a half inch or an inch off the bottom. And uh, if you can't see me, you can see my hands anyway. But uh, I'll slide it up. I'm going to clamp it in place temporarily. I'm going to make that cut with the router and hopefully I won't waste too much material but we've got to leave enough for this side of the cab. cut but I didn't care about it being straight. I didn't want to waste quite that much material but I need to get this done. So we're we're hanging over two to three inches there. Wasted a little bit of material but let's hold that up for a second see if it's long enough to make another cover like this. Still have a little bit left over. Thank you. Okay, 
Okay, now we got it cut temporarily close to the size. We're going to take it back off, make sure the surface is still clean, and start applying the cement. Try not to mix this in the house because you do need a good ventilated area. That's why I'm outside too. This stuff is supposed to be applied after the cabinet and the materials have been sitting somewhere for 24 hours at 65 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Now it's about 61 degrees out here, but earlier in the day it was up to 70 or so and the cabinet's been inside around 70 degrees and so has the adhesive and the laminate so I'm hoping it'll be okay. Now this stuff sticks and adheres on contact but it takes up to seven days it says on the product label for it to get its full bonding strength so during that time you don't want to put you know any pressures on it like sliding it across the ground with the laminate might be pulled off if you don't have rollers on the bottom and unfortunately I'm gonna to have to do that a time or two I'm just going to, have to be really careful because I don't have my rollers yet Since this cabinet's kind of slick, it's probably only going to take one brushed on coating. You can use a roller or a brush, but if it was uh, wood, like plywood, and it was kind of rough, it had a, a deep grain to it, you might have to put two coatings on it, and you'd have to wait in between coatings for it to dry. And uh, the laminate itself should only take one brushed on coating. You have to wait about 15 to 20 minutes for this to dry, and it gets a little tacky. It looks kind of like varnish. After that, you should be able to stick the two surfaces together and it should make a permanent bond. But you have to use a J roller or a smooth block of wood or something to put pressure on it all the way across and especially around the edges. Um, I don't have those, so I do have a block of wood. But what I'm going to use actually is a rolling pin. And hopefully, I won't break the rolling pin putting pressure on it. It takes about 75 pounds of pressure. What I'm trying to do is go over it and smooth it down a little bit because there's places where the cabinet may not be completely, you know, flat. So I'm kind of going over some areas that seem to have an unusually heavy deposit and smooth it down a little bit and making sure 
to get it along the edges as good as possible without dripping. That's pretty much it guys. I gotta do the other piece, the laminate itself, and let this dry for 15 to 20 minutes. And it should have just a little bit of a gloss to it, and then I can come back and apply the piece that needs to stick to it. Well guys, remembered I said not to do this inside. Well, I'm going against that right now because I really don't have another alternative. There's nowhere to really lay this outside where it's not going to get dirty or try to roll up on me. So I've got it on the kitchen table with my wife's approval this time. And I've wiped off the surface, so reasonably clean. If it gets on anything, it'll be on the tile floor, and hopefully I can scrape it off if it hardens. I've got it overhanging the table. And it looks like it took maybe a little less than a third of the can to cover the cabinet. This will almost do both sides, but I think it's going to be just a little short, so I do have a second can. Make sure you get it up on the edges really well. And I didn't measure to see how much of this was going to be cut off where the indentation is, like where your monitor is, so I'm probably going to waste a little bit of glue coating the whole thing. If you ever watch uh, Arcade Repair Tips video series, Tim Peterson, I think, talks about how you don't have to coat the whole thing. If you know there's going to be a big cutout like where a section of the cab is, you can save some glue if you kind of estimate that. But I didn't do that. I'm, I'm just kind of playing by ear. You have two hours working time, even when this dries after 15 to 20 minutes, that you can still apply both the pieces together. I'm going to cut right here guys just to save some battery life and I'll show you right at the end of the process. This is just kind of repeating. Okay, right now I'm just brushing out some unusually heavy deposits where it might have, you know, just collected in one area or I didn't smooth it out good enough. And this piece is about ready to just start curing. I'm just going to let it cure about 15 to 20 minutes. The piece outside is pretty much cured right now. It's ready. But you've got two hours working time. I'm going to let this piece in here cure and get ready. It should, the activation process or whatever they call it, should be taking place with the outside piece. And, and this piece will start here in about 15 minutes or so. But I'm just smoothing out, adding a little bit to some areas that look a little dry and just brushing out some thick areas and just trying to make it smooth so we won't have any lumpy or bumpy areas. Okay guys, I've laid some uh, small wooden dowels across the laminate surface or the old laminate surface on the cabinet where the new laminate will be applied over and uh, it's on top of the tacky surface of the adhesive. It's pretty much ready to go and we got the stuff inside ready to go and these are almost half inch. I think I recommend half inch or above. This is about maybe three eighths so I, sh I should have got slightly larger but this will keep it from making contact with the laminate that has the adhesive on it and making a permanent bond until we have it positioned correctly. 
I know it's hard to see guys because it's completely dark out here but my wife and I have already brought the black laminate out and applied it to the surface and I've been pressing it down by hand and taking the wooden dowels out the wooden dowels were along the length of the cabinet from the top to the bottom and we pulled them out slowly as we seated the uh, new laminate down on the side of the cabinet my friend's rolling pin so Rod if you're watching this is your wife's rolling pin <laughs> having to use something like this is because I could not find a J-Roller at the local hardware stores. I looked at the local Ace, the Home Depot, and the Lowe's, and the only thing they had was a very large J-Roller that was made for laminate flooring, and it was like $40, and I wasn't about to pay that when I could get away with doing something else. be about finished with that process guys I'm gonna to have to take my camera into charge just a little more before I show you the router trimming process okay guys I know you can't see too well because I can't see myself that good but I'm gonna go ahead and try to use my new router and route the edges of the laminate and get it as good as I can I've set the uh, depth of my bit so it just goes through the laminate it's maybe about two or three times the thickness of the laminate but the little bearing on the bottom should ride right against the side of the wood on the cabinet panel. I'm going to start at the bottom of the cabinet. That way if I make a, a mess up or a boo-boo or whatever, it'll be near the bottom and you won't notice it as much, especially if it's sitting on carpet.
Well, guys, if you're still with me and the camera hasn't died, it's still going. I went ahead and took a little extra time to go around it another time or two to get any little tiny burrs off and make sure they had a good flush trim. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed. Let me get the camera loose here. I know you guys can't see really well until I get this in the house, but I was a little worried about this one corner here. I had been putting pressure on it off camera, and you can kind of see there is a tiny little chip there. I was putting pressure, trying to make sure it adhered well, and it just it just barely cracked a little bit right there because my hand was a little off of the support of the cabinet underneath. I can hit that with a tiny spot of black paint. I mean, that's you see how small my finger is. I'm just picky sometimes, and it'll cover that up. That'll be back against the wall anyway. But uh, really turned out good. Take a look. Hard for you to see, I know, but I'm going to have this in the house soon. And you guys can see the whole thing. But, uh, came out with an awesome clean line. This, this doesn't even look like the same cabinet. You guys are going to see when I get it in the house. Looks, it, it just transforms this cabinet. It makes it, I'd say, a hundred times cooler than it was with that old red laminate. But let me get off here and I'll get this thing back in the house and you can see it a little better after I clean up some of this mess. Okay guys, got the main cabinet back in. We did get one side done with the black laminate. And it turned out awesome. Looks like a totally different cabinet. Doesn't even look like the same cabinet. I've just got the control panel temporarily set up there just to kind of take a look at it. But uh, turned out looking just great. No problems at all. Brand new trim router. It did excellent. Don't know if we're focusing there. Don't have a lot of light. Got a pretty good line there. All the way around the cabinet. Again, I apologize about the lighting. But, uh, no problems at all. The other side turns out this good. We ought to be in good shape. I did a temporary fit of the dark blue T molding that I bought for this. I'm pretty sure that's still the color I want to go with. It looks pretty good to me. But I did a temporary fitting on there, and the way it fits on the groove here that's in this wood already, for some reason, it has the exact perfect overhang here to come a little further than the old red laminate, so it meets up almost exactly completely flush with this black and it covers up any little bit of light color that you know is the inside of the laminate like the grayish color that's below the black it covers that up and uh, I mean it's almost perfectly flush so it's going to look really good once I get all the team holding on but just wanted to show you that turned out great 